Can you see me, all right? Yeah. Do yeah. I look terrible? <laughs> Not really. You look all right. Yeah. I'm getting more and more hairy. Are you? Yeah. Okay, my, my hair, I think it's going to come a point where Sabrina has to, I have to let her loose with this, the scissors. Yeah. Yeah. The worst that can happen. Well, I can have a total right off of a haircut. We'll start again. Yeah. Plenty of time. Right, let me, uh, shall we uh, get going? And what? then we can kind of do an up, a live update on how we're doing as, as, we, uh, as we talk. Come in. Come in fresh. You taking another lucky dip? <clears throat> yeah. Right. Okay. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> hello. 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 Remote. We are remote once again. And I'm longing. Oh, I just love now to be at the pub. Yeah. Oh, it was a lovely day. I know it was a bit cold today than it has been, but I'd love to have been at the pub today. It's Easter Monday, and it would have been a great beer garden, garden weekend, wouldn't it? Yeah. It was a lovely weekend. Lovely weekend. But okay. still, yeah. absence makes the heart grow fonder. Delayed gratification. Yeah. I think we'll Next be time you go, you will certainly enjoy it. Yeah, we'll be grateful for it when we do. Right, my friend. Um, you do yours for your, your uh, drink first, and I'll dip into my lucky box. All right, I've gone for a new one. Talking of sun, sunny days, I've gone for Sunshine Pale Ale. Oh, nice. Seasons. That sounds like a happy, a happy drink. Yeah, it's, um, it's from a nice place. It's down near well, St Ives sort of way, Padstow sort of way in Cornwall. Yeah. Lovely, lovely part of the world, somewhere that we were only saying today as a family where we, we would love to be. Um, but soon, soon, I'm sure. So it's 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 pretty golden, not much of a head. Oh, it's very clear, isn't it? Very clear. Yeah. You see your see your face through that glass. And it tastes like um, a little bit of sort of almost exotic fruit, just but not a lot. It's not quite you know not, a bit more fruitier than apple, sort of. Not maybe kiwi, maybe something like that, but oh, okay, a bit bitter, which but not too bitter. A little bit of bubbles. It smells like beer. It smells like beer garden beer. Does it? Summer, oh. summer beer. Summer beer, yeah, that's nice. Refreshing. Nice. Well played, Lushingtons. Good stuff. You um, lucky dip? Yeah, I was just I was doing a noise there for my mail, which is distracting, so I just turned it off. Um, right into the into the. So yeah, if you weren't listening last week, shame on you. But um, oh my, keeps messages keep going now. Quit. Um, if you weren't here last week, um, I ordered a box of mystery cider from the Bristol Cider Shop, and each week I'm going to dip into the lucky box and not look what I'm picking out. And uh, these are all award-winning ciders from the West Country area. And I, oh, this is a heavy bottle, Jeff. This is a heavy bottle. Oh my days. Right, okay. <laughs> this is a, I think you know this one, Jeff. This is Dunkerton's. Is you know, you know Dunkerton's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's from my town. From, you're from, uh, founded in Herefordshire. Is that right? Well, yeah, he's from Cheltenham. It, yes, it, yes. It does say Cheltenham, producer Dunkerton's Cheltenham in the back. Um, I don't know, have I, question, have I had this before? This is a premium reserve organic cider. It's just, it's just called Dunkerton's, but it's 6.8%. So you might, have had, you might have had some at the tavern. That was, wasn't that the first pl where the podcast started? Is that the tavern? Yes, the, the first one, but we've been there twice. <clears throat> Well, there's a good chance I'd have this before. Do, do they do more than one um, side? They probably do more than one, don't they? Surely. Well, I honestly don't know. I, they've um, they've expanded and they've opened up their, their really big brewery just on the outskirts of Cheltenham. They did have a beer, but that that was nice to start with, and the second batch wasn't great, and so then they stopped making it. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, this is um, this is the super dry guy. Who's so this, it says there's a quote here from Ivor Dunkerton. Is that the man? No, Julian. Okay, there's a guy. Well, the quote here is from someone called Ivor. Ivor the engine. There we go. Four out. It's just, I don't know if it's just that I've become weak in my uh, lockdown state where I've got no armor strength. But this feels like a heavy bottle. But it's only. It's still a 500 ml bottle, which is maybe it's just made of thick glass. Um, so there we are. Um, the pint of cl cloudy-ish cider with, yeah, relatively bubbly. It's quite sweet though. So it does say on the back it's a sweet. It is, it's quite nice. It is more sweet than acidic. It's nice. It's, it's lovely. Good. Yeah, it's got a kind of a, a, a very um, sweet taste to it, but it's quite... Uh, a mixture of fruits in there, I'd say, almost like, not like a strong apple juice flavour to that, but kind of like a blended whiskey, different apples maybe. Yeah, but um, it's nice. Six point eight percent. I'll just again just be having one of those tonight, but but that's uh, very very nice. Thank you, Dunkertons. You did. I'll close the box back up. Don't want to see what's next. Cheers, my friends. Cheers, buddy. Sorry, we can't be uh, together as such. Getting used to it yet? Sorry? Getting used to it yet? Um, yeah, I think so. I think, I think there's an, yeah, interesting dynamics occurring in our family over the last 24 hours or so, whereby obviously we can say when this is, this is Easter Monday now, because this is probably going to go out straight away this week, but try to make Easter a bit different. But I think even now, especially this morning when I think um, half of my family is kind of dealing with it quite well, the other half not so much. Okay. So um, I think uh, perhaps just a, a bit more niggly today than yesterday mm -hmm. than it has been, just in terms of the routine is getting a bit more um, more routine. And I think that's uh, an element of boredom setting for um, my wife and my daughter probably. So yeah, it's a test. This week's going to be testing as well, I think. It's going to be a difficult one, but um, because I don't think that the, the constraints are going to be relaxed anytime soon for the UK, certainly. No. How about you? Um, yeah, so we had a rough start with a with bit of illness um, in the house. Not the illness, but now, now thing, everyone's sort of back to full health. We've sort of we've found a new norm, as it were. Yeah. Uh, I think it's quite, it's funny how adaptable human beings are, really. Yeah, you know, we we were horrified at the thought when when lockdown was first announced, and uh, thought, well, we'll never be able to get used to that. But we've adapted, and I think everybody adapts. And yeah, it's all a bit weird, but it's kind of we said today because it's sort of three weeks today, isn't it? Since yeah. the lockdown was announced, we said well, we've done three weeks, and we both said it wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. No, no. Uh, I mean, fair to be fair, I'm not really working a lot, no. which means that we're not. We haven't got that pressure. That's going. That's going to come. How do you mean that's going to come? What do you when, mean? I, when I start working more, it's going to be harder. Yeah. To balance things. How are you planning on phasing back into it? I mean, because you took you took time off over the the Easter, did you? you? Took time off this weekend and. Well, yeah, because I was supposed to be on holiday anyway. Oh right. Okay. So we're only supposed to be back this weekend. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't really know yet. I'm, I'm trying to work out a few things, whether to um, maybe maybe try some webinars. I think I'm going to try some webinars. Yeah, I saw, um, I think I was on LinkedIn for my, um, for my sins on a bank holiday Monday. I was checking it and I saw that you were offering something like that. What, on any particular subject or is that something you're going to... Well, just floating the idea, really, seeing if people are interested. What kind of topics would they be interested in? Mm. Um, I'd rather... I've always been like that. I've always... You know, when, when meetup groups ask me to talk, I always say, so what do you want me to talk about? Rather than, I'm going to come and talk about this. Yeah. Rather than push my topic on them. Um, so I've just put it out there. What 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 subjects would people be interested in? And most any are, any responses yet yeah, or not? Yeah, so far it's around product ownership mostly, okay. um, and change agency. So I might I might see how that goes. See if enough people are interested, um, and just put something together, short, sharp, targeted, 
um, and yeah, see if uh, see if that works as a, as a way of changing, pivoting what I do rather than yeah. do their training classes or whole day on site. You know, sort of hour here, hour there. Mm. See what that happens. Yeah, I, I've done a similar thing. Um, mate, I think as well, it, it keeps it breaks my week up. So I've been um, running. My intention was to run almost like brown bag sessions because I was very conscious and people, a lot of people have told me a lot of the feedback I've been having from people who are working from home is the amount of time they're spending on Zoom calls or conference calls or whatever that might be. And it's quite exhausting. It's quite draining. A lot of people are saying they're trying to scale back. So I tried to do like virtual brown bag kind of lunch sessions. I tried to time box them within 45 minutes of lunch lunch breaks or what would technically be end of the day or lunch break. So people aren't completely bogged down by it. Just, but again, I've been quite surprised at the number of people that are interested in them. Yeah. Um, and I've just been basing it around online retrospectives and having a chat about around those and, um, and using some of the cards that I've got within those. So they've, but they've been quite popular. Um, so I've been quite quite pleased for that and it does give me something to focus on because there's not a lot of um, training happening at the moment it would rightly so people are um, um, people just not booking training courses you don't expect people to at the moment either it's not a time to go out and find training so I say that maybe it is a time to reach if you're retraining this is perhaps a great opportunity to to reskill but um, I think certainly for my clients they're they're holding back really on booking any more training courses or anything with me online so I'm trying to I'm trying to offer something alternative, and I'm getting quite a, quite a bit of interest in it, really. Okay. So yeah, it's quite a nice way of doing it, and because they're short sessions, it's quite, you kind of feel they're manageable and they're quite easy to. You don't feel like you're exhausting people or um, or um, monologuing at them for too long. So it's quite good. Are there any other sort of what other what other alternatives are there to another? webinar another video call another screen session i don't know maybe just audio so i was kind of thinking then um you know go a, a walk around the garden or a, put some just put your earphones in and don't have screen just just listen because mm. we've talked before haven't we if you deprive yourself of one sense the other senses yeah. will will increase yeah maybe just shut your eyes and listen yeah I noticed it's uh, one of my good friends who's uh, obviously everyone's in a lockdown situation, but he said to me that he's found himself picking up the phone more because he's fed up with um, internet based calling. Really? So almost going back to, um, you know, dialing a number and um, walk it, walk, and you can be more mobile. You can walk around the garden or whatever and um, be outdoors without losing signal. You can just, you're relying much more on a mobile phone, but, um, the amount of people now that I think that aren't using mobile phones because everything's in front of the screen, mm. it can be quite refreshing to get out and um, use the good old mobile. Yeah. Or dare I say the landline? Do you still have one? You have to have one. <laughs> I never answer my landline. No one ever rings my landline anymore. Well, the only people that ring my landline are spam and my father-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I just don't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, it's a rarity in our house. Something's something's usually wrong. Um, it's usually the doctor's surgery. I think the doctor's surgery still got our landline. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be something around that that we know. Or school. If school, yeah, if, if one of the kids is ill, there'll be a crisis, and we have to go and get the kids from school. The landline will probably ring. That's you know, generally you know, how it works in our house. But no, it's, it's a kind of a forgotten, um, forgotten art, I suppose. Forgotten uh, device. What am I missing with your uh, with your online retrospective sessions? What do you mean when you miss highlights? Um. Well, uh, well, I, what are you missing? I'm, I'm doing a. I'm co I'm condensing a a seven day retrospective into 15, 20 minutes as a way to demonstrate how you can do it. So using an online tool in a much, and I guess this, it, you would never run it that quickly, but just to explain some three parts of a retrospective using my lexicon cards, just to um, demonstrate different and um, 
identify with different emotions at various points to mm. a, a, a relevant point uh, to go deeper at various points and just explain to people how you can use those cards um, online really so um, the only downside is um, I don't have those cards in an app or in a kind of a downloadable format at the moment. It's just literally have the paper-based version. So, but um, you can still use them online. And I've just been using, and we've been sharing a few different, um, I used Google Jamboard, which is quite a good tool um, that I found that I actually people have, a lot of people have said how useful it is. It's a free tool as, lot, as most Google things are, but um, it's just really, really easy to get people onto and using online and you can do a fairly quick retrospective using post-its um with a, a virtual flip chart so it's yeah if you don't have people don't have, to, don't have to download anything before the actual event they can just come in and but it, with people it's, it's quite cathartic actually for me to see um to see people um to make to make new connections and that's one of the nice things that I, again these we've done a couple of these um ad hoc impromptu social distance ins on friday and you, we are just making new connections and um, or refreshing old ones. Someone that was on a previous training course messaged me and told me they'd love to come in and just have a virtual drink and just catch up. So it's, it's nice to reconnect with old people, or older connections, sorry, not old people. But um, I'm finding a lot, as, again, a lot of people are seeking me out as a result of these webinars as well. So mm. you do and you make connections and then they, you know, they might lead to something else further down the line. You don't know. Hmm. What do you miss the most about work? Old normal work. Uh, what do I miss most about it? It's a good question. I think I just like the... I like the... Dare I say it? I can't believe I'm saying this, but I like the tr the, the the journey, the, the track. Not, and I mean the whole journey in so much as the sense of it of, of the 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 delivery of of, of being of, of what's what's it? I'm trying to condense it. I think I like going out and doing something and then coming back, going out and coming back, going out and coming back. I think. I think I can, I never be, or will be destined to stay at home. I miss, I miss being around, I miss experiences and being around people. And, and um, I don't know if it's about people really, if it's just about different places. I, I've always been very much, and my parents will testify to this. I've always been a, a home bird. So I like being at home. I like coming home, but I think it's just, what I miss is, is, is breaking the week up. Yeah, and being in a different place, and then and then the act of I miss coming home because now I am at home. Yeah, so that's probably part of it is is being away and then being back, being away and then being back. And I've been lucky enough, and um, that that time away is a has always been an essential part of the job for the last ten years. But um, it's relatively compared to how it used to be at BT. Certainly, it's always been a shorter. Uh, amount of time two three days um on average i'd be away and then i'd be able to come home so i think that's why i'm missing is is going and you know as much as that probably sounds like me being a terrible husband and, and father I, I like going out and being coming back well as the stereophonic said you've got to go there to come back yeah and you've got to and if, if if coming home is a, is a good feeling, then you have to leave to go and get it. Yeah, and like um, I think, like you said, look, a lot of families, and I think I'm no different. That they benefit, they stay together, they gel when because they have that distance, and they, then they can come back. So we are kind of four of us are being thrown into a bit of a pressure cooker at the moment. That, and I think we see start to see a few cracks now. That, um, and we, to me and my wife, talked today about maybe having a bit of time, whether it's we do, we've all, we're doing the exercise bit together mm -hmm. on every day, but now, and even my son's starting to get a bit fractious with his sister. So we're thinking about now what we might stagger that and, and take them out in pairs yeah. rather than doing it all together, just to give them each a bit of time apart. Mm -hmm. 
and probably me, me and the wife a bit of time apart as well. So I think I think we've always benefited from that. Hmm. What about you? Um, I say I missed the challenge. I think. So the the every day was different. That's when people used to ask me about my job. Mm. What I liked about it. I, the one thing I would come back is I would say every day is different. And that's the one thing I didn't like about training courses is they 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 do become quite samey, which is why I don't do many of them. <clears throat> but yeah, every day, every conversation, every coaching session that I have is different to the last one. Mm. And I don't know what I'm going to get. You know, I used to like turning up at a client and not knowing what was going to happen that day. Mm. Uh, and at the moment, I'm, I'm pretty sure what's going to happen. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? And that, you know, one of the, we were doing, um, I'm doing a session at, um, well, it was going to be at one meetup group. Now it's going to be at four meetup groups simultaneously. Right. Next week. So um, a couple of hundred people, I think. And I'm doing, I'm putting together what I'm going to talk about. And one of the things I'm going to talk about is just sharing a little bit about yourselves to be part of a good team. And we do something like this in some of our courses. Um, and I was just putting together uh, an example user manual for me mm. um and you know one of the things that that you'd have as a sort of warning if you like beware mm. about me is i can get bored quite easily mm. when i get bored i get restless and i'll come up with silly ideas and i'll probably do something silly mm. uh, just to be different just to change things up <clears throat> and that's kind of you know what i'm what i'm thinking about at the moment do something silly <laughs> <laughs> for this user group no 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 oh, just 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 in general in life in general yeah you know that I'll, I'll buy something silly or i'll do something yeah. silly or i'll start a silly project you know yeah that kind of thing just to, just to break the monotony it's not a bad thing though oh it's been it's been a big part behind my creativity the things that i've done you could, in fact, you know, kind of actually to put you in a bored state is probably what you need to be to, to create something. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, they yeah. said Einstein, didn't they? Einstein, Einstein used to sit in his office and just stare out the window for you know, two thirds of the day. Yeah. He'd quite often be seen just staring out the window or full of snoozing in, in, in his office. Letting your brain enter that kind of wisdom sage-like state well, I saw someone that I, I like on Twitter today. I didn't, I didn't respond because what I was going to say, somebody had already said, so I wasn't going to add anything to the conversation. But um, they were, they were lamenting or feeling guilty about the fact that they just didn't have any motivation today. And so, since lockdown, it might have been yesterday, for all I know. Uh, since lockdown, every day, you know, they'd sort of made themselves a plan. They'd been quite committed, quite dedicated, motivated take some action, do some exercise, get some work done, be really productive. But today they just weren't feeling it. And they mm. said, I feel awful, you know, I feel lazy. I just don't want to do anything. Um, and, you know, the responses were, were like, so pretty much what I would say is that that's okay. Mm. And sometimes doing nothing is, is the best thing, you know, yeah. sometimes doing nothing is, is doing everything because mm. you recharge. That's when your ideas come. Um, you know, you would, you'd have a day off even if you were going into work five days a week. You'd have you know, a day where you weren't doing anything. Yeah. It just the environment is weird, so it makes you feel weird. Yeah, I very much. I mean, as a family, we tried to treat this Easter weekend as we would an Easter weekend. So I didn't. I know that we're having a kind of call now, but I don't really view this as work. This is more just a catch up, but. I tried um, and I didn't check emails really. I had emails, but I, you know, I didn't respond to them and I was quite, um, I tried to keep that structure that this was holiday time for me. So this is time that I went out and played tennis with the kids today and, and things like that, that we probably wouldn't have ordinarily done if I was at work. But I know that work the, for the rest of this week is going to be different work and it's probably, I can't, treat it I won't treat it like a full day 
I'll do an hour and I'll have a break and I'll do come back and do an hour in the afternoon or something like that and it won't be um it won't be a strict nine to five. I can't adopt that that um structure for the remaining whatever it might be, four weeks, maybe maybe more, who knows? But um yeah, I'm I'm trying to treat it differently. I think I have to. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I um, sent a newsletter out today to uh, to my subscribers. Yeah, and quite a lot of people were on um, were off for the Easter weekend, so you get the automatic out of office reply. Yeah. Uh, quite a few people were on holiday for quite a while. Quite a few people were furloughed as well. Mm. Uh, that must be a weird position to be in. Yeah, do we need, I mean, for the benefit of our, our perhaps more international listeners, because I must admit it took me a while to understand it. So do we need to explain what furlough means for people that are perhaps not UK based? Maybe. Um, so to try and avoid mass unemployment, the government have decided to subsidise people's wages if organisations want to put them what they call on furlough, which is basically not working yes um so if you want to say this person is not going to work or cannot work the job in this state then the government will pay 80 percent of their wages for up to three months but that person then cannot work mm. so and it's quite strict isn't it you can't even check your emails you, you, you've got to be you've basically got to down tools yeah yeah uh, but it's a way of avoiding companies having to make layoffs yes so that when things do go back to normal the economy can just restart mm. but those people are in a very strange place you know they're out of the loop yeah um and when people are out of the loop uh, all sorts of things happen you know they start second guessing things they start they, they don't feel as valued they, they they get a little bit suspicious they or they'll feel like they're, they're playing catch-up are they someone that wasn't valued because they were one of the ones that were furloughed? That all these thoughts will be running through their heads mm. and more. Mm. Uh, but it's a it's a very proactive move by the government. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> obviously lots of different. Com have you noticed in terms of? I'm thinking more in terms of social media and, and the number of interactions you're getting if have people has, has it has it quietened do you think in, in our industry it, it, the, the community is because of this furloughing that maybe the uk community is you know simmered down some of the noise levels i don't think so because i think a lot of i mean it must have done a bit but i think it is probably going to be less hit mm. to begin with because a lot of those people can work, can work from home yeah um, yeah, and unless projects stop and less funding gets cut, you know, then they will be able to carry on. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a weird state. But yeah, you know, I, you know I, I've been, I was sort of <laughs> embarrassed. Is that the right word? Maybe um, this just the the assumptions that you make from a position of um, privilege. I suppose that you know, we just assume that everybody has a good internet connection, mm. has something. Now, technically, legally, I don't know what this is like in the rest of Europe and the world, but in the UK, employment law says that it's the responsibility of the employer to provide adequate facilities and equipment for people to be able to work from home. So if, if the company here is expecting people to work from home, they need to provide them with a laptop or a mm. computer and an internet connection and so on. Um, but I don't think that's the case everywhere. No. And even if that were the, even, even though that is the case, it happened so quickly. I can't imagine that that was that was able. No. Many organisations were able to put that in place. But uh, yeah, it's um, a lot of you know, schools. You know, if schools are going to be homeschooling, have has every household got the equipment mm. for the kids to be able to be homeschooled? Mm. or taught virtually you know it's a bit and also if you're working in high security or anywhere around 
areas of confidentiality, you might not have the security in place yeah. to allow virtual connections from home anyway. You might not, they, you know, legally, you might not be able to work on that project or deal with that company from your a place other than the the security of the office. So it's um it's not it's not going to be easy for everyone, certainly. No. No. On a on a slightly more light hearted note. <laughs> I um I was uh, I, I, I at, the, at the end of my email and my end of my, end of my newsletter I always try and have something a little bit light hearted um, yeah. and this this time I, I I embedded a video from Brandon Flowers of the Killers singing Mr Brightside while he was washing his hands yeah I don't know if you've seen that clip I have seen the clip yeah yeah um and there's all sorts there's Gloria Gaynor singing I'll Survive and there's Arnold yeah. who's Yorkshire Terrier basically doing something to make that boring mundane task a little easier to stomach yeah. and get into the habit of yeah um when it first when all this first came out I, I heard people saying you need to sing happy birthday twice that's that's how long you need to be yeah. brushing your hands for um and you know when we start talking to getting our kids to brush their teeth it was you know, supposed to do it for a minute or something so we have egg timers or something yeah. that just makes it a little bit easier and that that concept of almost gamification mm. of of hygiene, yeah, <laughs> which I just thought was quite funny. Well, I think that's one of the benefits that will come out of this. I think we will, as a nation, I mean, I'm massively hypothesising, but if if we do come out of this with a better sense of hygiene, and everyone washes their hands for on average fifty percent longer, that can't be a bad thing. No. Uh, and it's just, it is about that kind of um, muscle memory, isn't it? The more you do that, the longer your kids brush their teeth for, the more, the more frequently they do that, the, 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 that habit will kick in. Yeah, because practice doesn't make perfect. No. Practice makes permanent. Yeah. So if you're doing the wrong thing regularly, you just get better at doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realise for years and years and years that I was brushing my teeth badly because I was brushing too hard, right? So I was I was rubbing the enamel away. Yeah. So my dentist said, "You brush really hard. You, you know, you've, you've got sensitive teeth because you've brushed away." This. I just didn't know. No. I just thought as long as I was brushing my long and well. The, yeah. No matter how embedded that muscle memory of how hard to brush, as well as the action and the time. And that's where you know we say how uh, you know even effective teams still benefit from from external coaching because for all intents and purposes I had good dental hygiene mm. but having someone who could see what I was doing and see the results of it and raise it back to me hold the mirror up to me uh, yeah. I was able to to refine what I what was to me. Um, a good practice it is I think also it's time having time to think about it so the example I, I, I cut the lawn yesterday was it today or yesterday I, it all blurs into one doesn't it it was yesterday and you know I deliberate I thought you know what today because I've done this a lot now because I've got I time to think about it I'm going to cut the lawn in a different direction. Mm. So I'd normally cut, the, I'd normally wouldn't even think about it, just going to um, autopilot, cut strips. That's the most efficient way to do it because I've done it a hundred times before. But this time I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it in diagonals. So I went at 45 degrees across, across the lawn. Okay. And it took a bit more time and it was a bit awkward. I faced a few more questions from my kids as to, Daddy, why are you, why are you doing it that way? But, um, and I'm, I'm probably kidding myself, I think I've done it better, but it was just refreshing to have time to think about doing it differently and to actually try something different, even though I might try it again differently next week. I think if you tried it differently once, you'll try it differently again next time. Did you learn anything from doing it differently? Um, I think... I think I let the looks. I think it looks different. It looks different. Um, and 
Did I learn anything about cutting lawns? Probably not. I don't think so. But it just, you know, it's just had I if I was focused on doing it in the fastest time possible. But do you think you were? Do you think you were more mindful? Of so that again, you broke up then. You think you were more mindful about it? Yeah, because I wasn't rushing it. Because you were doing something differently. You weren't just following. No. You were, yeah, that, that. I probably wanted to do it better. Because it was different, I wanted it to be better. Okay. And I think that was a nice... I like giving myself time to do that. I like, I like having the, the, uh, the thought, the space to do that in do my know, head. Do you know what caused you to, to, to do that, where that thought came from? Um... I think it was probably a, a little bit of a, a little bit of monotony because I'd done it. I'm bear in mind, right? I'm I'm mowing the lawns more frequently than I, than I ever have. I think because because I've got a lot of time at home to do it. So it's probably variety and, and to to break out of the monotony of doing it the same way. But also, I thought it might benefit the lawn. <laughs> I might it might benefit the grass. The grass might grow better if it's brushed in a slightly different direction. All sorts of um, reasons that I told myself to try and uh, uh, justify the time. But I, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> what are we talking about mowing laws for, Jeff? Honestly, well, what have we come to? Well, we might, we might have spoken about this before. And I can't remember where the, what, who, who ran the study or, or whatever, but it was around uh, students who learned things with different fonts, wasn't it? And, and the students uh, yeah. had, had the font in it. It was much more difficult to read generally yes. better in their exams because they had to work harder to read it and therefore it stuck more. Yeah. I think there's that, that sense of mindfulness in that you, know, you were doing something different rather than just following the easy path. Yeah. That uh, it, it, it probably was probably of a higher quality. Maybe uh, mm. didn't cut any corners. Ha <laughs> ha. No, I see what you've done there. What I did find, I had to, talking about cutting corners, it was probably, I felt... I worked up more of a sweat because I had to turn my mower more, doing it in diagonals. When you get down to a, a narrow, a small part of the garden, you've got to do quick turns okay, yeah. more frequently than if you're just doing long strips. So it felt like I was working harder, but I, I feel I was more pleased with the result, even though it probably looked turn. exactly the same. Equally, you would have had longer stretches where you weren't turning. Yeah. You would have gone corner to corner. Yeah, yes. So it should even itself out. Yeah, maybe. I felt if you if you looked at like, you know I'm a sweaty man, Jeff. If you looked at my t-shirt at the end of it, I was pretty more sweaty than usual. Okay. But it was a hot day, so maybe that's why. But I enjoyed it. I you know I I enjoy I I I I've, I've no shame in saying it. I enjoyed cutting my lawn yesterday. Well, I think I mean I'm not I'm not making a too too big a stretch here by likening this to to agile teams because quite a lot of the teams that I've worked with and I'm pretty sure you're similar especially given your your improv angle is that encourage teams to do something even that even that they're doing well yeah to do it differently to see yeah. what they can learn because it's very easy to get complacent at a say a seven seven out of ten yeah but they could get an eight they could get a nine if they did something differently the risk is that they go down to a five mm. and they don't want to risk that because we're loss averse but if we can create the conditions where they're safe psychologically safe to try something different then i, I find it's a lot easier to build on something you've already got a strength in than to start with something that you're weak at yeah you know you get 10 percent better at something that you're already seven out of ten at that's mm. a lot better than getting 10% better than something you're one out of 10 at. Yeah. And so yeah, you were yeah. 7 out of 10 at mowing the lawn. Maybe you're 7.7 .7 now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I could probably still do better. But I don't, I don't think better is always quicker either. In my, in my view. So again, so I talk about it, yeah, in terms of trying to, almost deliberately trying to find the slowest way to do something because you'll generally probably improve your practice um, by looking at it in a more slightly 
um, slightly more inefficient way. But yeah, that was certainly the case of mowing the lawns. And uh, we learned how to play Yahtzee today. Have you ever played Yahtzee before? That's with dice, isn't it? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we did that today. Did dice games today. Dice, dice games and tennis was today. Okay. Well, so a tennis court still open? No, I, I've, uh, we've got a little short tennis net that we can just about squeeze into our front garden, do the drawing on our front garden. Okay. So we use the, the kind of the kids learning tennis balls, which you have to really whack really hard, but they don't actually go, go very far. So dodgy bounce as well. Yeah. Yeah. So on a bit of a camber, but it was, you know, it was good fun. And uh, yeah, I'll show you something else. This is, this is what lock, you know, this is a bit of a visual clue here, but uh, what lockdown does to you these days. This is a. Uh... Oh, hello. <laughs> you have to describe what you can see, Jeff, for the, uh, better, his, the tape. He's got his instrument out. I've got a big, big yellow instrument. Yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got my old trumpet out, mate. Well, then play us a tune. There you go. <laughs> so I'm, I'm learning. So one of the things we're doing on uh, with our friends that we can't see at the pub, we're, uh, we're learning a talent. Or, re, or relearning a talent that we... Uh, and we're, we're kind of doing Britain's Got Talent over Zoom calls on a Saturday night. So, yeah. so I've, got a, I've got some practicing to do. But those are things that, again, if I didn't have the time, I wouldn't, I'd never have got that out. Yeah. So. What was your favourite tune to play? What was it? Yeah. Oh, I used to, well, I used to play in a brass band. So it would be things like, um, I used to like marches. Bit of Sousa, Jeff. Sousa? Yeah. Googling. It's American probably... American marches, Liberty Bell, things like that was good. Okay. <laughs> you have to look it up, mate. No, it's, it, but it's, um, I'm trying to learn, so you can put the wonders of, uh, of technology, I'm trying to find an instrumental backing track so I can play, I can just about play Sweet Caroline, but I've got to learn it. And I'm going to play that next week. So, but I need a, a backing track to- oh, Do you see Neil Diamond's video? No. Oh, has he done one for the washing hands thing, has he? Yeah, he says, reaching out, not touching me, not touching <laughs> you, washing hands. Oh, bless him. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's brilliant, yeah. There is a lot of humour that's come out of this already. The whole Matt Lucas thing as well, which is... And I heard, I heard on the radio just now, um, Brian May has just done a version of Baked Potato with Matt Lucas as well. Again, this isn't... This is very much tuned to a UK audience, but um, an actor and comedian in the UK is basically released a a fun song about a baked potato which describes how to stay hygienic and, and stay and um, self-isolate within the, the coronavirus and it's gone it's gone viral no pun in or every pun intended good way. Yeah. yeah but in a good way so yeah and, and now just about everyone's um jumping on the back of that and doing alternative versions with matt lucas so but no, the, that type of thing is it's great for to, for morale, isn't it? It's great to keep people's peckers up. <laughs> so there we go. Oh well, all right, there you go. There's we've another got, one in the can. We've got a few. Um, we've got a few more collaborations coming up. We have a few. I know. Well, we have to explain. I only saw one, but um, we've got more than one. Uh, well, maybe we've got, I think maybe we've got two. Okay. Crossovers. Yeah. Well, certainly one, one crossover and maybe, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe two, maybe three, who knows, but definitely one. Okay. Next week. Yeah. So we're having, we won't, we don't want to say too much now, do we? But we're, we just ask people to keep an eye on, um, Make sure they're subscribed to get every episode. These these episodes are going to be coming a bit a bit faster at the moment because we, we've got time on our hands to do them. So, are we going to have another another bar opening social distancing on Friday? Yeah, we might do. Yeah, I think so. It's good. It seems to be quite. Um, last one was quite quite. I couldn't stay there for the whole thing, but the conversation carried on after I left. I think didn't it? Yeah, we had a bit of a lock in. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> I, I, well, I can't, 
I shouldn't name, no, we've got name names after this out, but Nigel got a shout out, didn't he? But um, uh, in all the wrong ways. But, uh, <laughs> <Who>? <laughs> Nigel, <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, one of the Jeff did a pub quiz, Nigel. I'm sure Nigel will be listening. Jeff did a pub quiz, and one of the questions was, "What was Nigel Baker's middle name?" How many people got it right, Jeff? No, no, <laughs> no one got it right. It was quite, it's quite funny. And the best, the best thing was somebody said, "Who's Nigel Baker?" <laughs> oh dear, but uh, I only wish he was there to hear it firsthand. But uh, but no, sadly not. But yeah, uh, we we do miss you, nice. It would be nice to see you in in the pub on on Friday if you're around. Um, but yeah, that, that's that'll uh, hopefully we'll, we'll just keep those going if um, while the uh, appetite is still there for them. All right, maybe uh, maybe we could put a shout out for some topics, seeing as we're not stumbling across many things at the moment. Maybe uh, maybe there's some some of our listeners have some questions or some topics they'd like us to address. So. <laughs> If you're listening and you have a question or a topic you'd like us to cover, then tweet at the Agile Pubcast uh, and let us know. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, everybody. Well, stay safe. Keep washing your hands. And we will see you again next week, if not before. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.